para o wow wow.
of players as well hasn't he so it's always good to have friends in high places I suppose can't hurt can it Gibson with the clearance the young defender who is the nephew of Middlesbrough's long-time chairman Steve Gibson and a real good prospect as well under 21 international he's a leader at the back you can see him talking to his man all the time pointing away captain material yeah big summer coming up for him as well at the uh, Euro under 21s his clearance there to Clayton here's Gibson again Mathieu Flamini Giroud's layoff is not an accurate one. Halfway through the first half, they haven't conceded, but here's Giroud looking to change that. Well, Danny Welbeck's giving Giroud a real ear bashing here. He thought he should have been played in. I'm not sure whether he was in. He had a player just alongside him, but you can see, not happy with Giroud. Centre forwards are always a little bit greedy, aren't they? you tell me <laughs> you're the uh, fully paid out member of the strikers union sensation may be brewing again with Bradford 2-0 up over the Sunderland that uh, get, that is now a result Stead keeping up his record of scoring in every round along with a John O'Shea own goal what a run for Bradford it is meanwhile his Ozil looking to get Giroud in extraordinary stuff isn't it by Bradford City what a run yeah there's certain teams isn't there Sheffield United have been a team over the last few years that you really you know you're not surprised almost when they go and beat a Premier League team and Bradford are becoming that as well had a good couple of good cup runs over the last few years and well they're on the road to another one in the quarterfinals of the FA Cup fantastic Tomlin has quite been able to get into the argument yet here Gibbs lovely control from the left back Arsenal do have a free midweek coming up but uh, in the not too distant future they've got that Champions League assignment against the French side Monaco to come Bamford now friend his Adoma friend to continue with his run as well from the left back position Adoma again it's too long for Kike but 
don't forget we've got a special edition of the Fletch and South show next week with uh, Gazza involved and Russell Brown as well. That's followed by Spurs against West Ham. That's next Sunday, early kickoff there. We're on air from 11.15 with our match coverage. And on March the 1st, it'll be Arsenal in action against Everton from the Premier League. That's another Sunday game, 1.15 p.m. All available on the BT Sport app as well for you. Gabriel playing it forward quiet introduction to him on his debut the Brazilian from Villarreal good turn Sanchez Welbeck lays it off Santi Cazorla Gibbs and Giroud that is a fantastic goal Golazo from Santi Gut, because all of them eat. Sanchez, yeah, dances around, plays a nice little ball into Welbeck, who flicks it up, but here I think Cazorla's going to shoot, but look at that for vision, absolutely brilliant, and, well, Kieran Gibbs has been up, playing high up all game so far, and that's why he picks his man out, good finish as well from Giroud, and really very difficult for Middlesbrough to do anything about that, when Arsenal are in that type of form, one touch passing, virtually impossible to defend. And middles for a finder response. Kike. Adoma. Tomlin. Ledbitter. With a possession football. Not long in the end towards Friend, whose head won't be a problem for Boy Jack Chesney. Almost a signature goal, that wasn't it, from Arsenal. That's just what we've seen for many, many years now. That quick pass. The, be perfect. the biggest problem of Australia is it's it's literally miles away from anywhere and the place is huge. It's it's a gigantic country and miles away. And even when you go over to the likes of Korea, Singapore, and you're like, ah, oh, I just need to go to Australia. It's another what? Nine hour flight? What the hell? Yeah. Yeah, it's not right. I, I can't believe it. But <laughs> it, you're right, that is a, a really big problem that um, it's, it's really hard to cap, which is also why it's so cool that they're here. Uh, um, what, one of the things we do need, I mean, we can't, we can't make a game title called Global Offensive and then not have international Global teams, teams joining. Global yeah. Yeah, you need that. Um, obviously, the, the big frontier that we're still missing is the Asian scene a lot more. But well, let's not forget that, obviously, the last major with Vox, a lot of people were, you know, pulling them down because, obviously, they were invited to the majors, and, and it was just like, well, they don't deserve the spot. But they've just gone and beat 3D Max. If they go and dispatch yeah. of Team Dignity, they absolutely deserve that spot. You know, they've already proven that they are a very good team. Yeah, they take it very seriously, without a doubt. So um, I, I'm actually looking forward to this match quite a bit. Mm. And Inferno, the ultimate best of one map. So it's, mm. it's likely to be a very close game, I think. Um, but based on what we've seen so far today, I, I might call it just a tiny bit in favor of, uh, of Vox. Of Vox, yeah. Bit, yeah. I feel for some reason. I feel like they might have it I'm, here. I'm not sure how much we could read into that last match. I mean, while Pimp did drop some big scores, obviously Fetish didn't, but I think it was slightly fueled that last match on a little bit of hatred in there <laughs> that, uh, that maybe got to some players and not the others, but Fox certainly seemed to get for this one. They've been here obviously since, um, I think it was Friday they came in, Thursday, Friday, and they've been l relaxing, I think is the, uh, the cleanest way I can say it, over the last few days. <laughs> <laughs> They've been relaxing. Absolutely true Danish style, uh, without a doubt. Now, um, I don't know. I mean, is there a better fuel than hatred for, for playing these games, though? It can get in your mind sometimes. Like, like, it, 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 some players like feed off it. Some players do really well off it. But some players they just get that red mist descend, and they, you know, when they should be holding an angle, just holding a position, they'll just go piling straight in there. And actually, you know, after watching ESC CT side of Mirage, I kind of think that's what happened. Could have been maybe a little bit too much of, of that and not enough of uh, restraint. Uh, Vox, you did see like a whole team high five going on. Team uh, just uh, getting ready here. It's kind right? of a low five. Low five, really? I guess. Yeah, that's the right <laughs> word for it. I'm trying to think if there's like a better way to uh, to explain it. And Pimp looking. Wake up, Pimp. You're nearly ready to play, mate. 
just uh, I think every time the camera's on Pimp before a game, he actually has that, exactly that view, like that angle as well, looking uh, looking like it. Um, I'm wondering who's going to start on what side as well, because that could be very interesting in a, in a game like this. It is, it can be a little bit tricky playing T side in Fono sometimes, and I think Vox especially is, they, you know, I'm not sure Dignitas is one of the teams that they've been really preparing uh, a lot for here. But if they have, they might have been, you know, it's might have been a little bit easier for them because they might have done research the last time around on Fetish, so they mm. might already have, like, some sort of clue about how Fetish likes to play, and that might sort of help them it, out here. I think Navi mail spats they've got there, isn't it? Look like Vox are using Navi mail spats. I think Skill quite glad to catch a glimpse just towards the end there. But uh, these teams, of course, are facing each other. It is the winner bracket final. Team Dignitas already dispatched of ESC. Vox Eminor past 3D Mac to the side. We're going to be going into that knife round, and this is for a place in the finals in Katowice. They're going to be joining the likes of CLG, LGA Esports, LGB Esports, I should say, Flipside, Tactics, Titan, and of course Cloud9, who qualified this morning. And this would be another 2-0 for one of these teams. Who will it be? Who will join the likes of Cloud9 and CLG? And Flipside, who have all picked up those 2-0s. I'll tell you, Light, it's LGB, they got the other 2 -0. Vox almost looked like they had a plan going to the knife round, but it, it didn't work. But just for a moment, it felt like they had uh, they had something going on there. The backstab coming in from AZR. So it will be Dignitas getting to start on the CT Still waiting side. for the that that's what players to get ready. Uh, I'd actually be quite surprised if, uh, if that isn't going to be the case. But, um, you know, I'm always up for a surprise or two. The pistol round. I would expect a very standard pistol round to come out here from uh, from the Dignitas team. Non-standard one would be the kind where you end up having a bunch of people over at the B bomb side early on. You can kind of go for a stack. You only really do that if you have like a good read. So unless mm. Dignitas have like inside information, yeah, um, I, I expect to see them just run it really casually here. We'll, we'll see how it works out for them. Dignitas did choose the CT sign as you expected here on Inferno. Get a couple of rounds on the board, it works out well for them. Three HE grenades and three smokes on Dignitas. That's a lot of investment mm. here. I wonder if they're going to catch anyone with it. That would yeah. be very cool. This is going to be Fetish and Kirby who are over on B. So, not going to get the B push that they're expecting here. Isn't going to be A instead. And Sponge just pushing straight through the smoke, straight into CT Arch. They're coming straight around, and that's going to force Nico back. Nico forced back through CT Arches. And this is going to be a quick A push. AZ in place on Grave. Yeah, it's a good second kill there. Pimp takes the first. AC follows up on Top Gun. Definitely a very strong player on this particular map here. Getting down. Pimp grenade comes out. Not going to catch anyone. Top Gun finishing off with a double kill, and it's into a 2v3. They need that bomb plant. Top Gun is in charge. And um, Jax is down in the pit, ready and waiting. 2v3 right now, and uh, Nico does have the defuse kit. You're right. They've got, a, they've got a reasonable amount of time. That's a great headshot through Top Gun. Now with the triple kill. It's a 1v1. Nico has the kit and he's in sight, trying to see if he can defuse it. But he's actually going to give up on that for a second. He wants to force him out here and he could have just stuck it. I think that would have been great here. I don't know if he knows he's got the defuse kit. This is going to be a quick one. Oh! Split second away. But it's Vox that pick up the pistol. And they will take the first T side victory. Very, very good stuff. I mean. JKS and also Top Gun, three kills to his name, all of them headshots, I believe, and very good start for Vox Eminor. They're going to be excited about that one. Now it's four HE grenades on Dignitas. They want to see if they can simply explode the Australian team here, and it's going to be a rubber banana one, two raining in. Oh, God, man, if they had been just a couple of inches further up, that could have been horrible. And they actually will lose a lot of players regardless, as Pimp was also pushing down the middle. Fetish and AZ are left here, 2v2. They've got the bomb still in banana, AZ. Just tucked around there. Havoc is going to try and cover out his approach on this one. Fetish needs to get moving. He needs to try and help him out. He's going to come pushing around. That's going to be Havoc picking up the kill now. Fetish is the last man standing. That decoy was tossed up mid. He's going to try and pick up a weapon. Whether he's just going to save it, whether he's going to try and go for the defuse. No, it looks like it's just going to be a save. It's going to be a straightforward back away by Fetish straight in towards Pit. And that's going to keep it hold. So, Vox. Well, they pick up the round, they get the bomb plant in, but that was a good eco from Team Dignitas. 
Yeah, fairly successful. I mean, the investment is not that great. You invest uh, $1,200 into mm. those four grenades, and you get three kills for it, and you steal an AK that's worth more than $1,200. So, mm. you know, that's pretty sweet. And because it's only the second round, they're going to get to use that in the third round, and um, that could make a big difference. We'll see if they can put it into a good spot. Maybe uh, leave it to someone like Pimp or Kebu to, uh, to get some kills. It's one of the names I'm going to have to practice on. The Danish pronunciation of Kebu. We went through this one. Just That's two days ago. No, we're doing just fine. It, it's all good saying it's slow. <laughs> <laughs> it's when I gotta say it fast. That's when it's gonna go all out the window. But Vox do start things off two to zero here. It is a good opening for the Australians, who were written off early by a lot of fans, including the odds statisticians, I guess you could say. <laughs> The, the betting community. Look at this, another four grenades being purchased, two of them rained down, that's so much oh, damage look how low they are. Nico charging in, USPS in hand, and the fog is gonna clear, he's only gonna get the one kill, Kevin picking up one fetish with a kill, that's the AK, still in play, he kept it for himself, and now he's charging it, he's the last man standing, he's gonna have to go really quick here, 1v2, he's covering the bomb, but they smoke it off, smart play from Mox, and they're gonna get a clean escape here, very, very close once again. <gasps> He's going to push on through, and he might actually catch the back. Oh, he just got around to second mid, just in time. Fetish making his move. Bomb has been All right. So, <clears throat> we have we have our bands going on right now. For the finals of the silver gold tier. If you're just tuning in, uh, DGC, welcome to the DGCC. I'm Alpha D105. I'm going to be casting this final of the Silver Gold uh, games between the team of PKA and Polish Sebula. We'd like to thank from the beginning uh, GameServers.com for providing us with these six servers for the duration of the tournament. You should go check them out. They are. Re uh, reliable and cheap servers. Nevertheless, we're going on in a best of five where uh, PK have the uh, upper hand with one map win since Polish Sebula came from the lower brackets. Uh, that is their disadvantage. So from the beginning on, we've had a ban of season, train,
All right, so we have Alright, so, I would like to welcome you officially to the DGCC tournament of the SNG uh, tier games. My name is AlphaD115 uh, and we are here joined by the two teams of PKA and the Polish Sebula. We're going to be battling out for the fight in the finals of our lower tier brackets so we're going in here with the We go into the right round. So, welcome once again, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in the ninth round of the first lap of this best of five. PK has the advantage in this case. Uh, with the nuke, the nuke being a uh, auto win for them, since they are uh, from the upper brackets. And the map pool as chosen was banned, season, train, cobble and overpass, and chosen PK, Mirage and Cash, Polish, Sebula, Inferno, thus two. And Mati gets the first knife for, uh, on Dana, but Saul Gas gets the knife on George Lee, making it on four on four. The equal amount of HP. Luxio though. The Jukes, the Jukes. Akro gets Luxio and the knifing begins. And Mati dies. Akro and Mati die to Mr. Kiastico. And Dana opts to switch. And the teams will be playing. Polish Sebula on CT side. And PKA on T side. So we have the first round going out here as Polish Sebula getting pretty much overrun by PK as George picks up the triple kill and Arco picks up a double kill. And um, we are, oh, PK have picked up the first round against the Poles.
So we got PK pushing out onto A slowly with our beautiful number six Acro pushing through connector, picking up three kills before going down. And Solgas goes down to the bullets of George. And eventually Mr. Castico. No, Mr. Castico picks up Wyvern. Uh and will George no, George's spray through does not hit. George still continues to try. <laughs> Mr. Castico takes a moment, runs off, and is f happily safe from the tease and the bomb blast. It is 2-0 for Polish Sebula for Poles. So, we'll follow here, Mr. Kiasta, because he's the only one who has a gun. He's going to take this sticky position close up to T-Ramp. While, uh, while the T's are going to push up on mid, as we have three T's on mid, one over in B apps and one in T-spawn. Uh, he's most likely going to try and go on to A. Oh, the rotation has been forced for the poles as they are confused of where to go. One on B site. One in kitchen. Kitchen gets spot out by Matty. Matty picks up Luxio. Soul Gas goes down to Acro. And it looks like it's going to be the round for PK for the third round in a row now after the pistol by uh the pistol uh round, the first round. Dana though picks up Wyvern. He's going to save the AK, smoke himself off, and hopefully not get flanked by Acro, but Acro can hear him. Acro can hear him. Acro sees him. Who's going to win this one? 1v1. One one? Acro is on top, and Dana goes down, but without giving a fight, getting one person, one person back, causing some minor economic damage. Alright, so George uh, with it almost got cut out with a knife, uh, with a grenade out. But Acro goes down to Dana's op shot. As the T's opt to go on to B. Although George gets Grace, as I was just corrected, not so guys. Grace gets the kill, uh, gets a bullet into him, putting him out of his misery. As we have Dana with an op. Luxio gets the kill on Wyvern. Looks who gets a second kill on George. Second call pushed through and gets the kill on Matty. Hype next goes down to Mr. Castico. And it is the first round on the board for the Poles. So still enough money for the for PK to buy a full buy of nades, AKs, armor, and one op versus we can see here Matty with the op versus Dana, but Dana is he going to repeak or not? He's just sh sh shifting over here. Oh, is he gonna? He, he has to have spotted. He does not get the kill on to George as George gets two kills. Second call takes out Hypernix. Wyvern die uh Wyvern gets the pick on to Sekokot. And Mr. Castigo Grays are the last people remaining. Mr. Castigo goes down to Wyvern with a nice headshot. The plant is secured. And Grace goes 
down as well. 4-1 to PKA on their choice, map choice, Mirage. There's been a pause in the match. Wyvern gets digged in the head. Akro gets the kill on Mr. Castico. George pushes out onto B side, and it looks like a massacre for the Poles as they are left with Dana and S Grace. Grace still pushing up slowly. Oh, I did not see him. He can get the kill. If he's just fast enough, he can get the kill. Oh, he does get the kill. Hype not, uh, Hypernix misses the shot with the up, but his friend Acro is there to pick up. Acro gets the triple nipple, making it 5-1 for the European team. Both teams on pause and we're going into round number seven. I'll take this angle as the CTs are ready to take the T's on as they push onto B, uh, onto A. Here come the set smokes. Wyvern though taking Mr. Castico who was trying to weigh. Acro lurking in the middle but getting shot in the back by Luxio. Wyvern picking up. Soul gas here. Hypernex picking up. Luxio. And Dana going down to George. 6 1 for PKA. Dana gets a double kill, Mr. Castico gets Acro, and this may look like the second round onto the board for the Poles. Yes, it is, as Luxio finish out, finishes up by eliminating Wyvern over at B Apps. The missed op shot by Luxion Acro picks up the AK headshot. As the T's are starting to push on to A, Dana picks up Hypernix over at Palace. He sees Wyvern, he knows where Wyvern is. Who's going to be the lucky one? Wyvern gets the headshot on to Dana through the spray and it's a three on four situation. Can the Poles get a third round onto the board? Akko picks up second cut. Akko picks up Mr. Kiastico, but Grace gets Wyvern, but soon he gets 
taken out straight after by Maddie. Luxio with the opening frag onto Acro on mid with the op. Reading that, the oh very smart plays from uh, coming out from the post as they push through Palace in the check mid, knowing that it is going to be a B push. Luxio with the slightly slow reaction does not quite get the guys over in B apartments, and now they off to push out into underpass and where is the rotation there's nobody looks yo though figures out that they're going to push will you hear the people in window in jungle I mean in window jungle and looks yo though picks up George whoever picks up Mr. Kiastico looks yo has to still hold off just a little bit, some team damage going, a whole 41 damage, Matty picks up second cut, and yes, it is the third round for the opposed, we get 3-7 on Mirage, the choice of PKA. Acro though this time picking off Luxio in the mid op battle. Second card smoking himself off. Dana though picking up Maddie. Oh Wyvern just saw Dane uh second card and gets the kill onto him. Akko there to get Grace down and Mr. Kiastico is left on a 1v4. Maybe he could get a few kills or kills still. That's exit frags. But most likely, yes, he's going to go and save. And we can see here Wiffern taking a big risk. Taking a big risk. Standing very close to the bomb set. Is he going to survive? Yes, with 3 HP. But Acro goes down to the bomb explosion. Making it 8 to 3 for PKA. Some friendly friendly laughter coming out from both the both the sides. Always good to see that. Luxio picks up the first kill onto Wyvern, made it slightly easier for the poles for this round. But anything can happen. 4v5 isn't a end. Oh my lord, the friendly nade. <laughs> Second one already in the f within three rounds helps the CTs to take out the T's as it is 5 to 2. 5 versus 2. And the Poles are going, to, I mean, the P, uh, the Europeans PK are going to start rotating onto A, but they're not fast enough since the rotation time is so much longer than for the CTs. They are not going to manage to get a free empty A site. It looks like it's going to be a save. No, Matt, yes, Matty gets second card, but that was valuable information gained by second card. Will, will Grace push through, or will he stay and not risk? I'm just going to spray through the smoke. 
Aluxio though, he gets, he does get Matty, which is very bad for Matty, as he is down to 1,200. As he is down to $1,200. But, but, Hypernix got the return frag. On to Luxio. <sighs> Making it 4 to 8 for the Poles. And Dana picks up Acro. Very good start. Looks like the Poles are starting to get a roll, getting a hand onto the game. As Dana picks up a second kill. Onto George with a headshot on mid. But Hypernix opening the round for the tease as he gets the kill onto Luxio. Data misses Wyvern twice and Wyvern almost punishes him. Second caught though getting a double kill. But Wyvern getting second caught as well. The double nade is going to fly out and it's going to be a touchdown with the nade onto Wyvern by Dana. <laughs> but George having a bit of laughter there. There's a slight pause going out again. <laughs> Tactical pause. <laughs> The T's are ready to unpause. Um, Something happened to... Is it Grace's mouse? Or what happened? There's no information on what had happened, but we, we're gonna just wait. No, it is an unpause, um, and we're going to... Alright, so Grace's mouse apparently went off and on for some reason. And we're continuing with round number 14, Polish Sebula 5, PKA 8 on a best of 5 finals in the silver to gold tier. The flashes and nades, smokes come out as PKA push aggressively on to be uh, Mr. Kiastico is there getting a triple kill. Will he get some more kills? All the CTs, all the remaining Ts are down low. We have <laughs> one person, Wyvern. Who was sitting in smoke, who took out second card, but Grace was there to return the favor that uh, to Wyvern. And it is 6 8, and it's the last round of the first half. Do, does, the chat, does the chat believe that Polish Tabula has the momentum now to go into the T side and achieve a victory on the first map that is Mirage? Because they do need to. Uh, win three maps in a row to get the win in the finals whilst PK only have to win two since they have a one map advantage Luxio pushing through, but Wyvern was just sitting there and waiting. Dana though picks out Wyvern, and that is the draw bop. That is, that is the bomb dropped, not draw drum bopped. Uh, but Batty picks up second cut, and Grace is left on a one versus two. He gets two up, so it's completely possible. Batty is pushing through underpass, and George. I don't think George is expe expecting this. He gets the kill. Matty's pushing hard. Some lag coming out from Grace. Will Matty get the shot on? No! Grace with the sick flick onto Matty. And good half put out by both the teams, making it 7 8 for PK. PK showing a very good half on the T side. We'll see if the Poles can finally push through the momentum, push with the momentum that they gained on the CT half and finally beat PKA in this first map. Since they have already played before against each other once in a best of three in the semi-finals from where they were dropped into the loser brackets, to the lower brackets, however you want to call them, uh, where the Poles beat 
Stuxnet 2-0 to zero for the second time in a row. And now they're back here. Alright, so we got Acro here picking up the first kill onto Luxio. Good start for the T uh, for the CTs, excuse me. The and it looks like the T's are going to be setting up for a set play onto A. Yes, there go the two smokes. The CTs are waiting for the smokes to deploy. Although we got here Acro pushing up very hard, but Acro goes down to second class. As we have Mati who picks up does not pick up, he's put to low Wyvern, though picks up Graze. And Matty goes down to Dana, single card down to 17, Mr. Castigo down to 7, and Dana down to 50 HP, while all the CTs have 100. We got Wyvern going down, to, uh, Wyvern killing single card, Dana picking up Hypernex, and it is a 2 on 2 situation, 31 on Wyvern, 78 on George, and now Dana's a low with 19 HP, can he do it? No, he cannot, and PKA pick up the first round of the second half. Nine seven. The CTs here, we can see that they're buying a uh, a mixed buy to counter this on the eco round on the anti eco. Excuse me. And we can see Polish Sebi are pushing through onto B and they get the first kill. Uh, no, George gets the first kill, but then Dana returns the favor with a headshot onto George. And they have the plan. Very good round for them already. But if they can do some more economic damage, that would be absolutely brilliant for the Poles. You can see Hypernix with the sniper rifle. They second cut though going getting a kill on Matty. Matty though get it. No. Confusion. Akko picking up the kill on Dana. Grace left on a Grace and second card on a 2v2. Oh, this is good. This is good. Can they pick up the eco round? Yes, it is an eco round win for the Poles. Well played, Poles, as they make it 8 to 9, putting the CTs on a force eco. And in return, they get to have a buy round, which is very good for them. Maybe now they can switch it through, or switch it over finally. Data here with the op. Oh, he misses the flick onto Wyvern, but Akko gets Luxio on mid, who is trying to push through connector, making it a four on five early on in this round. Oh, Dana getting the absolute inches of acro, putting him down to 14 HP. As we, have, as we have number seven, George here pushing through. He knows Dana is on mid, and he heard the rotations. Oh, Mr. Castigo checks. Yes, he nevertheless gets the kill. And now they heard that the T's are going on to be. They block each other, losing some valuable, valuable time. Hypernix is going to peak. He spawns Dana, so they know that the AVP is on mid. Three people, though, on A. As the 14 HP hero here, Acro, is going to pick up one kill. Is he going to pick up the second one? No, Mr. Kiastico gets Acro, and they get a free bomb site as they get the plant 25 seconds before the round was over. And now, 35 seconds. They have to endure 35 seconds, and they can tie the game. A three on three situation. Question is, can they do it? They push through. Gray starts to get the try. He tries to spray, but he does not succeed. Hypernix going down to Dana. The bomb is planted for Dana, so we see Wyvern pushing through, pushing through. He picks up Dana. 
Is there enough time? There is not enough time since they did not have... Oh, the miscommunication as Wyvern should have picked up the diffusing because, as they say, don't be a loser, buy a diffuser. And Wyvern had a diffuser, but he wasn't allowed. But there would have been none time, no time left at all anyway since the explosion happened at 7 seconds. So that is 9-9. Nine, nine. The poles are finally, have finally tied up the game. Can they take it from here? Can they go on to win this map now? 9-9. Nine, nine. The poles pushed hard as looks like he gets the first kill with a headshot P90 on to George. The spray control was not there as Dana does not get the kill onto Acro. Acro gets the kill. Hi Hypernex gets the kill on Luxio, but second caught there to pick up Maddie and Hypernex. Grace did not succeed with the nade, and it looks like Acro will be saving the AK. Yes, indeed, he will. And Grace should be running. Ah, oh, he. Grace really does love his Zeus, as we've seen him by almost every single game he has played. We got some full buys coming out from both teams. As we go into the next round, which is round 20, Grace having some lag issues. The Poles finally, finally getting ahead on rounds against PK. After a very bad, <laughs> you can't really call it anything else, a very bad attempt at going on to APK, shuts down the pose and makes ties the game again at 10 10. We're gonna have a very close game, I feel like, on hand this match. Arco picking up the first kill on Luxio with the headshot. And the T stacking on B here. As we fly over through the buildings here. They're all stacked up. They're just waiting. They are on eco. George spots out. Yes, he, he gets the kill. He spots out Grace and gets the kill. He gets the information that they might be here. Hypenix though. Will he see it? Yes, he beats. Kandana Dana is down to 36 HP. He does not. He, he does some small damage onto Hypenix. And the, CT, uh, the T's try and push onto the site. The bomb does not go down. Mr. Kiastico does not get the kill on Hypernix. But Dana gets the kill on Hypernix. Down to 14 HP. He's not going to do much more damage than that. Making it 11 10 and PKA go back in front with the rounds. Arco flashes out to check mid, but nobody is in mid. We have four people pushing over onto A. And number five, which is Dana, going to rotate away. They are on a very mixed buy with a PP Bison, a P90, and three AKs. Whilst the, T, uh, the CTs are on a very, very solid buy. Oh, Dana spots out two in mid. He does not take the shot and gets shot down by Acro. That is the opening frag of the round. Grace is going to push here from un uh, on an underpass. Mr. Kiastico. Yes, take Dana says, damn in chat. He should have taken the shot. Although George pushed up in a very sneaky position. I don't think they're going to wait that he's there. 
He should have waited as he should have waited for both the guys to go through. And Mr. Castico gets the return frag. Grace gets the frag onto Acro. Matty flashing out. Grace rotating away back into B apps. Hyperdex waiting here on B. We have one player on A, one in mid, and one on B. <laughs> George cursing his own spray. Alright, 12 seconds left. Hypernix with the important headshot. 8 seconds left. Mr. Kiastico has to get the kill. He has to get the instant plant now. He's going to succeed with the plant. That's good money for them. But he's not going to get the kill onto Hypernix. I mean, Wyron, uh, who was on 32 HP. But a very, very good that they got the, uh, the, the, fu uh, the fuse. I meant the plant overall. Since that will be some more money in their bank once again the polls decide to go on to a very mixed buy Luxio gets the first kill onto Wyvern, but Matty gets the return frag onto Luxio. Second call boosting up his teammates up, but Acro is there waiting. Waiting on short and picks up the first kill. That nade is not going to do a lot of damage. But that nade is going to do a lot of damage. Putting second call onto 53 HP. Acro is going to pick up second call. George is going to pick up Grace, and we are seeing a 1v4 situation here. Mr. Castico. What is he going to try and do here? I think he's going to... With 43 seconds, that's going to be hard. They're going to be hunting him hard. As we can see here... Ipenix should have spotted him. Oh, that noise will reveal that... Yes, he gets the kill. Matty is waiting. He thinks that Mr. Castigo should come on to B, but he is not. Mr. Castigo is going on to mid... Matty now rotating through underpass. Oh no, the AVP does not connect. As Matty tried to get the shot onto him, we have everybody just pushing on to Mr. Castigo. Unlucky for Mr. Castigo. He had nothing left to do than to die in that situation. And we're seeing PK starting to pick up their game on their map which is Mirage make it 13-10 and we're live with round 24 as we see the Polish side rush through apartments of B and they are by the looks of it going to try and do a aggressive fast push which has worked a lot in the past oh no looks is out of ammo but Dana there to pick up Akko gets the oh Akko gets the double kill triple kill Mr. Castico is left again on a 1v3 situation can he get the no he cannot leaving Akko onto a 5 HP onto 5 HP and PKA is streaming forward Data buys an AK and a mix by again coming out from the polls and it just seems that the Polish team cannot have lost that momentum that they had at one point. As you see here, we have four people, two in Palace and two in T Ramp. As George goes underneath, but we have Luxio there watching. He should spot him. Does he get? The, he doesn't connect with George, or he connects, but he does not get George down. Matty gets, Matty gets Mr. Castico. George gets Grace. Arco gets. Circle caught. Dana though finally getting a kill. Wyvern Matty taking Dana down. Luxio is left on a 1v4 situation. And it looks to be a 10-15 for PK.
the Bulls looked so good at one point of the mid mid section of the match. They looked so good, but then they lost the momentum, and now they're forced onto four P90s and an AK. Dana opting for the accurate damage than for the spray and pray gun, as we see Dana doing some damage onto Wyvern, but not enough to put him to zero HP, and the pools. Just waiting here on B apps. Just waiting. Seeing what they can do. Luxio tried to lurk and doesn't pick up. But he pulls three onto A. And we have... Who is this? George on short. He's going to check mid. And only one on B side. If... If they were to push now. They could get a free plant. Hypenex picking up Mr. Castico and trying to buy time as George pushes through short. Is he going to pick up Dana? No, he's dropped down to 34 HP. Grace picks up Hypenex though. Matty picking up two kills onto Grace and Dana. Second card left on a 1v4 and I think this is a GG. Indeed it is. GG called out by the both teams. And we're going to wait for the next map, which is going to be, which is going to be Inferno. Alright, so we will be taking a 15 minute break as the Polish side will will want to uh, try and figure out their lag issues right now. Uh, and then we will go into the second map, Inferno. And to all of you, this is, welcome to DGCC, the finals of the silver and gold tier with PKA versus the Polish Sebula. And PK have now a two map lead as they were as they came from upper brackets they will they received a one map advantage over the poles and they just won sixteen to ten on Mirage and if if the poles lose the next match then it will be over for them. We'll take a short break and we'll be back soon, so stay tuned.
So um, some news here. Q Squad won their first map, which was on Overpass, I believe. Going to check that out right now. Yes, they beat 16 6 Evolve and Overpass. And their second map will be Mirage. And the game has actually started as Evolve pick up the first round on cash.
well, that was a slight failure. Map should start any moment now. As we wait, Alright, there we go. The map is switching right now. And we're going to hopefully be going into the second match of this best of five finals of the SG tier tournament. Now. We're gonna follow here. Dot, don is ripped on. Alright, we just waiting here for the teams to get onto the right side. So we wouldn't have any confusion. <laughs> okay Lord. Thank you. Much appreciated. Alright, so Rip bots, and we're waiting for the last player from PKA to join. Yes, George is missing still. So we'll wait for him, and then we can start the second map. Ooh, why don't we wait? Apparently George died. Alright, he's coming. You know, I'm going to jump onto here because... What is this? I pretend I know how to do this. Yeah. And there we go. And here I'm going to wait for George. Ooh. 
as we have this moment of time, I would like to thank our sponsor, GameServers.com, who have been very generous and provided us with 10 super cool, reliable 128 tick servers for us to use for this tournament. You should go over to their website and check out for cheap and reliable servers. To recap what had happened earlier was that uh, PK progressed the tournament via top bracket where they received the uh, the ones they got into the finals. They received a one map advantage in this best of five. As in the semi-finals they dropped Polish Sebula down into uh, the lower brackets where Polish Sebula faced Stuxnet who they had previously dropped into the lower bracket and uh, we then proceeded to what expected the match of Stuxnet versus Polish Nebula uh, Sebula excuse me where they played a 2-0 win and progressed into the finals and here we are this is technically a revenge match between the two teams and Polish Sebiara is down by two maps currently so they have to win this or they will be dropped out of the tournament or not dropped out they will take second place in the tournament and PK will take first place Well, as we wait for the players to come back, I will just put on the waiting screen and put on some music for us.
Alright, so by the looks of it, we finally got all the players back here on the second map of today's final between Boris Sebula and PKA. And we're straight away going into the ninth round, which will be very important for pro uh, for the Poles to pick up because, because I should probably turn off the music. <laughs> Fail. Anyway, now that the music is gone. Good luck, have fun, knife set mid, very important round for Polish, for the Poles because they need to get the stronger set and they have to win this map or they are, or they will finish second this tournament. We can see Luxio there. Surrounding, but they run it through. They know that too. Oh no, this is not good. If one of the T's just go for goes around, this is this is this is very weird. This right here that's happening. We got two versus three here, and we got two versus Solgas. What is he doing? Oh my goodness, this is just all over the place. It's a two on four situation, but all of them are down to low HP. Oh, Seko Cut, this is, this is, this is turned around for the Poles and they pick up the knife round. They win that round. Amazing. The Poles stay on the CT side and I think we're going to go straight away into the game. The Poles ready up uh, I mean the PK ready up and do the polls ready up yes the polls ready up and we are going down we're counting down eight seven six five four three two one and boys and girls welcome to the DGCC tournament finals of the SG tier between Polish Sebula and PK PK are currently leading 1-0 on map victories plus they have one map advantage so 2-0 the polls are going to finish second if they do not win this round uh, this game so it is very vital for them to win to be able to push on to that second map so we have we have the T's pushing up aggressively but on mid but the polls are also pushing aggressively from CTO from, from Banala and Luxio gets the first kill on George as they split onto A, we're gonna see here. Arco pick up Mr. Kiastico. Matty being chased down by second card. Second card picks up Matty. Arco though picks up for his second kill. He picks up Luxio, and it's a three on three. They now the only low player on the pole side, and the rest of the team of PK are definitely heavily damaged. Can the poles retake? Will they be able? Seko caught for some reason does not notice the player. Wyvern picking up Grace and it's a 1v3 situation and the poles do not lock down that round making it 1-0 for PKA in his best of 5. So we can see here, uh, Arco definitely, Arco definitely went well. Uh, went ham last time, and now Hypernex is going completely ham as he gets a triple kill. Wyvern taking the fourth kill, and Mr. Kiasko tried to flash them, but they were too fast. And that uh, is a very quick round for PKA, making it 2-0.
Hypernix though down to 8 HP. Let's go spectate him. And Arco gets headshotted without returning the kill on Luxio who's down to 25 HP. Oh, Dana picks up Maddie with a beautiful headshot. Then it continue, but there's two people jumping down into pit. Wyvern picks up two of the guys in pit. And we can see here, uh, Hypen is, even though on 8 HP, he picks up the kill on to Mr. Kiastico, leaving second cut on a 1v4. But they have three low players, two very low and one on half HP. He could do some devastating econom economical damage onto the T's right now. If only he gets the shots. And George gets the headshot onto Seco Card, making it 3 0. And the, T, uh, the CT should be buying up this round. Acro showing off his Vulcan here. We can see here that Hypernix, Wyvern, and Acro. All not dying a single time in the last three rounds. Hitting five, five, and four kills respectively. Hypenix though picking up Dana in mid with the op battle. Make it already a disadvantage for the poles. Luxio though gets Matty and Grace. Gets Hypernix making it a three on three situation after Acro uh, got Lux Luxio down. Grace though going, going mental in this round as he gets his second kill, really keeping the team in the game, even though he's lagging. He's on seven HP. I don't know why he has the AWP because he will not hit anything with an AWP with that kind of lag. Meanwhile, as uh, for information uh, about the other game, it is 11 11 between Hue Squad and Evolve. 12 actually 11 between Hue Squad and Evolve as they are leading uh, in the best of 5 over in the higher tier brackets. Grace goes down. Can Seiko Cut? Yes, Seiko Cut gets the first round for the CTs onto the scoreboard. They get the CTs onto the scoreboard. And can they start building up momentum now? As I was saying, best of five, Hue Squad evolved. Hue Squad picked up the first map on Overpass, which is which is arguably a very strong map for them. And now they're having a very tight game on cash. You can see that game over at the Salt Tree underscore gaming or uh, Duergy's stream. Wyvern picks up the first kill, headshot AK onto Dana, but Luxio gets a not a return frag, but a frag onto Hypernix. And we get a four on four. Second cut goes down to Acro. But, and Mr. Kiasiko gets a kill on George. We get a 3-on-3. Three three. And it's literally back and forth, back and forth with these frags. Mr. Kiasiko, though, picks up Maddie, making it a 2-on-3 in favor of his team. Oh, and there's not a single CT is on B. This is a free bomb site for Acro. We have Luxio who can... Sp no, he's looking at the wrong place. How unfortunate, but now the CTs are pulling up onto uh, B, and we will see if they can take this round. Luxio gets shot down by Acro, and Acro gets a double kill, making him uh, putting him onto a triple kill. And it's one versus two. Wyvern picks up Grace, and that is 4 1 for PKA.
So we have an aggressive push from Acro. Second card though, picking up Wyvern. Oh no, Dana almost picked up Acro, leaving him on 6 HP. Got Grace here in pit. Gastico here also in A site. A second card though, tried to pick up Hypernix, but Hypernix was had an up and was faster, so he gets the kill on the second card. Leaving the CTs on a 2v4 situation. Acro on 6 HP, Hypernix on 34. So if they get if they get their shots on, they can make it a, into a 2v4 very quickly. Although George is spotted out, he's on to Oh no, George is down on down to six. Nine nine HP and basically Mr. Kiastica, if he just hits, yes, he does hit George. He's down on eighty seven HP. He could theoretically get but he doesn't know that the CTs are that low. I mean the T's are that low. So he will save the AK forty seven for the team. PK with the fifth round. Mr. Castigo having fun with those chickens as he waits for the CTs or the T's to push somewhere. So we have the T's spreading out across the map to gain as much information, but we have one very aggressive play from Acro as he pushes. He pushes, he pushes, he pushes. Oh no! Acro is going to pick up Data with that headshot opening up a pretty hard Solgas. He did not spot, Acro did not spot Solgas in pit. They don't know that Solgas is in pit. You see Mr. Kiastico. Mr. Kiastico is now picked up by Luxio going with the double kill. Acro making it 3 on 3. Oh, Grace getting the headshot onto Acro. It's a 2 on 1 situation. We have Hypernix running Grace with very hard lag. Hypernix is just going to save. And it is 2 5 for the T's. Uh, for the T side of PKA. We can see that Acro, Hypernix and Wyvern being the top fraggers at the moment. Hype and, uh, Acro picking up one more extra kill for himself as he gets Luxio down and Matty picks up second card. But Mr. Castico stops Acro's ham mode. Oh, Matty's coming. He did not expect that. And Matty picks up with 6 HP, Mr. Castico, and B is wide open again. George on 15 HP, Matty on 6 HP. One hit, one hit, yes, that hit happens. Grace picks up Matty, making it a three on two situation. The CTs can get this round. Dana looks away just at the wrong time. And he goes down, leaving the CTs. Grace alone as he gets the low HP guy. The AVP shot missing. Grace goes down to Wyvern. And it's 2-6, and it's looking grim, grim, grim. We're going to follow here Hypernix. Let's not get the shot on through smoke. But Akko gets Dana and Wyvern on B gets Seko caught making Lucio's life ever so hard on B. 
Can Luxio though get a few kills? No, Luxio moves out of the way in the wrong time. And Matty gets the kill on him, making it a two on five situation. Not good, not good at all for the CTs. Grace though picking up the headshot onto George after some spray battling going on over there. Did they spot each other? I don't think they did. But now Grass spotted him. S Grace did jump away <laughs> and Acro goes down. Will Grace no Grace does not have enough time to get the AK and the CTs are going to force up this round. Akko playing aggressively once again and they still know but now Akko gets shot down and that's a bomb at the same time. Maddie though getting the headshot up shot on to Dana. Grace with his beautiful lag is not going to connect to uh onto Matty. But he's going to do damage onto Wyvern and Wyvern is gonna get the headshot leaving Luxio onto a 1v4, but all of them are down to 50 HP or less. Or well, Hypernix is the only one above 50 HP at 69 HP. Wink, wink, boys. Can he do it? Is the dream real? Can he 1v4 clutch? Can't he see the player? Yes, he does. He does connect, but he gets no scoped by Maddie. Make it in 2 on 8. And PK are just running away. They are just running away with this game. If it continues this way, it will be a very short best of 3. As the second map is going to PK. Still caught those sitting there up in the smoke. <laughs> ah, it's beautiful. Wyvern saw him, but Sekakoth did not react. So, uh, Grace left on a 1v5, and this is looks to be 2-9 for PKA. Meanwhile, some information... You want some information from the other uh, qualifier uh, or the finals, other finals. Q Squad wins 16 13, the second map versus Evolve. We're putting them onto the third map, which is the Mirage. No balls, Luxio aka okay, Luxio gets the kill on Acro, making it a 4 on 4 situation here. Grace is running around, Second call gets the kill on Hypernix. George though gets the kill on Grace who was running around in mid. And these T's are starting to push onto A. 
Or are they rotating away? Yes, they are rotating away as all the CTs are on B. And not a single CT is on A. Well, they will get a free plant. We'll get a free plant on A. And Luxio does not connect and he's going to get 